This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek. And Workweek has covered the struggle of teachers who have been targeted, particularly under a program called Peer Assisted Review. And this program, PAR, has uh, been instituted in San Francisco. And actually, it's been embedded in a uh, tax law in San Francisco. Uh, and it was supposed to help teachers. And the evidence that teachers have discovered is that, in fact, it's being targeted at senior teachers, African-American and Latino teachers and being used to discipline and get rid of teachers. And joining us as, as a teacher who was targeted under the PAR program, and her name is Margaret Reyes, and she taught in San Francisco, was a member of uh, UESF. Welcome to Workweek, Margaret. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to share the story. So Margaret, you were a teacher and you did not want to go into this uh, PAR program uh, in San Francisco. What was that all about? The, the Peer Assistance and Review Program, uh, it, it, it's quite a, a, a story. Uh, I've known about PAR for a long time. I watched people suffer under it when I was at a school called Hillcrest for many years. Um, I watched it be used to discipline. I watched it to specifically target older teachers, push them out, force them to resign, sometimes in the middle of the year. Um, it, it was quite a horrific program and it was used quite uh, inappropriately. And it was quite frankly obvious what was being done there. It, it wasn't hard to figure out pretty much. A lot of people were aware of it and spoke up about it. And um, most of them don't work for the district anymore for various reasons. So in fact, I can't think of one of them that does. And you yourself were proposed to be put in that program. Why don't you talk about uh, who wanted to put you in and uh, there was opposition to you going into that program, even by the union. This is a multi-layered thing, but I'll, I'll talk about the, the referral that happened in 2017 when um, my former principal, Greg John, Richard Gregory John, he goes by Greg John, um, who had left a little over a year earlier and gone to central office to work in HR was now the PAR co-chair with Lita Blanc. And um, in August of 2017, I received, it was actually during the, the summer break, I did receive a text from Lita and then I called her and she expressed that Greg John was threatening to give me, uh, to put, give me a 4590, which is also called a knuck nup if I didn't um, go into, if she, if she opposed me going into PAR. Um, so it was, she was quite frantic. She said, Margaret, I'm trying to, I don't know if she used the word stave him off, but she said, I'm trying to get him to agree with me. He's quite adamant. And um, she did then finally agree with him. And I mean, I have, I do have paperwork or emails where she was trying to get him to stop. And he kept, she kept saying, I'll put, I'll give Margaret a 4590 notice and or go to the superintendent if you don't agree. So she finally went ahead and agreed. And um, then she did rescind that. And um, then I was put into it via, they said the superintendent at this point, there's some, you know, several years later, there is some dispute if anyone ever even went up to the superintendent um, in a hearing last week. Greg John denied that it was him that went to the superintendent. Uh, Daniel Menezes was quite um, vague about who would have gone to the superintendent. And, and he said that sometimes they do use digital signatures for the superintendent. So um, I still, all these years later, don't know if anyone ever did go to the superintendent. And in any case, it would be against the ed code to have the superintendent do that, that was put in in a parcel tax in 2008. And um, to the best of everyone's that I know's knowledge, including Daniel Menezes, the HR chief, I'm the only case in which it's ever been used where they go to the superintendent to force me into par. And it seemed like they thought you were a big threat to the students uh, at your school. What, what evidence did they have that you were a threat to the students at the school? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for kind of laughing just then because it's been horrible. It, it, it's not funny. Um, you know, it's been awful. 
what what a very I want to be clear that this is a very small group of people. Are you referencing the OEH hearing that happened last week, April 26th through 29th? Okay, yeah, I, I'm happy to speak to that. And I, I do want to start by saying to you and anyone who who logged in briefly or a long time, thank you for watching the OAH hearing. Um, this was a unique opportunity to do it in daylight for so many years. These have been done in a tiny uh, kind of courtroom, if you will, with no windows and um, teachers are there by themselves if they even get their most pull out before because often you're there without an attorney, you're all by yourself, as was the case with me. And I had to pull out um, for my hearing to in OAH to, uh, when they terminated my employee, uh, employment, I had to pull out um, because of just feasibility of physically getting there and being there with no attorney and they have, you know, entire law firms. But last week, um, the attorney general, deputy attorney general, his name is Joshua Johnson, uh, had a hearing to take away my credential. And I'd like to be very clear that um, I was the defendant. I did not call these witnesses to a hearing in the middle of COVID or in the middle of reopening schools. They came after my credential during the middle of COVID and reopening schools. And um, the people who showed up, Fauzi Abdul Kader, the principal who showed up to testify against me, uh, Daniel Menezes, who showed up to testify against me, Greg John, who showed up to testify against me. Uh, Richard Kirchie, the former assistant superintendent who testified against me and one, um, so it was those four administrators and then I won't name uh, the actual teacher who testified against me. Uh, she's a former teacher who now volunteers and um, she has, she stated under oath that she hasn't had a credential since 2017, but they did have one teacher there, um, former teacher and um, she clearly spoke against uh, in favor of taking my credential for life. And um, yeah, that was the people that showed up. It was a long four days. It was, it was a hard four days. Why, why did they spend so many uh, resources, uh, lots, large and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars uh, to take, uh, to you, take through you through this process? process. It seems like, like the district has spent a good amount of money on this. Uh, process to, to basically take away your license? What, what was driving them? You know, I can't speak to their motive that you would have to ask them. Um, I can tell you that this was the deputy, uh, deputy AG. This was the deputy attorney general doing this. Joshua Johnson works for the state attorney general. And in 2018, I did send them quite a bit of information regarding PAR. No one has ever disputed the data I sent. No one has ever said this data is wrong. Daniel Menezes did send me a letter once saying the reason there's more older teachers is because of teacher burnout, but no one has said the data is wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so I sent that to the attorney general in 2018. I do know that there are some teachers in Los Angeles that have sent things uh, regarding the Office of Administrative Hearings and who they target. So I, I do know those are going on. I do know those people. And um, so I don't, I, I can't speak to the Attorney General's motive. I can tell you that they ought, originally they were gonna suspend me for 90 days for insubordination for refusing par. That was what the California Teaching Commission, I believe her name is Mary, Vic, Mary Vixie Sandy. And the California Teaching Commission had originally suggested, but then after I sent the data, suddenly it was a lifetime, a lifetime suspension. So, and nothing, I hadn't even been near San Francisco Unified or frankly working with any children. So there's in between that time. So um, yeah, that, that's where we're at. Well, the Commission on Teacher Credentialing uh, apparently has this material that it shows that the, there has been uh, discrimination in PAR. Um, and at the same time, you reported that there was bullying going on at the school, um, which you addressed during the hearing. What was, kind, what was the kind of bullying that was going on at that school? So a lot of the details I'm not going to get into because 
uh, um, some of it, I would hope the attorney general is going to go and investigate. Um, so I, yeah, I, I certainly am not holding my breath on that. Um, I will say that um, it, it was significant. I will say that um, people left because of a small group bullying um, and all of these people were well that left were well over 40. Um, from my worldview, uh, Principal Gregory John, Greg John, uh, did not quell gossip. He stoked it. Um, he he didn't. From my worldview, Greg John um, really started a lot of uh, situations between people, not just myself. And while Fauzia Abdul Kader didn't start it, from my worldview, she didn't she didn't put it out. She she and in fairness to her, she did inherit a lot of it. But you know, if there would be a small situation, Greg John, from my worldview, did not try to deal with it. He would exploit it. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I can give you an example. Greg John told the uh, CTC investigator that uh, museums had called him after after my field trips. Museums called him to report that my students were unruly. Right, so. I mean, he's saying this to a, a CTC investigator and the attorney general is picking it up and coming after my lifetime credential based on that statement. And when I asked Greg John, who were these museums? I've never heard of this before. What, frankly, what are you talking about? He couldn't remember any details. Both he and Richard Kirchy said they didn't keep notes. So Richard Kirchy, uh, it was in charge of 20 schools and he had no note. He, he said he doesn't didn't have notes. And he, Richard Kirchy spoke of events that allegedly happened with me that frankly didn't. And um, he didn't have the dates. He said he observed a math lesson. Um, he didn't know what the math lesson was, just that it was math and that I didn't check for understanding. Um, there was a lot of very vague things um, that I think would warrant uh, if they happened, which they didn't. Mr. Kirchy never observed a math lesson for 20 minutes. Um, they would warrant some kind of documentation and um, he didn't, right? And again, I wanna stress that if Mr. Kirchy and, and um, Greg John and this former teacher don't think I'm a, great teacher, that's certainly their prerogative, but the attorney general to pick up these vague accusations and come after my credential and spend four days um, making me defend myself? You know, how do you prove something didn't happen? How do I prove that Richard Kirchy didn't come in and observe me for 20 minutes? How do I prove that, right? I was, I taught in San Francisco for a long time time but he didn't and if he's going to assert that I think he needs to have a date I think he needs to have what the lesson was about right and also they said they had sent you a a letter by email but they didn't have a copy of it and what was that all about I mean they had a, if you send an email supposedly you keep a copy of it they didn't it wasn't uh, it was a letter that you had never seen what how could that be uh, Okay, are you referring to Greg John's letter to me back in 2014 about um, telling a para that he yes. or she had to leave my classroom? And yes. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty chilling. Um, and I, I never, I can tell you, I never saw it in 2014, um, and I certainly never saw it before I was dismissed in 2018. There was a lot of uh, garbly goop for lack of a better word, in my dismissal and, and the, I was very specifically told by uh, people that they did that purposely so that it's impossible to afford an attorney to defend you, right? But so in any case, that was pretty chilling that an attorney general would do what he did. So he, when he was presenting Greg John as his witness, Joshua Johnson, the deputy attorney general asked Greg John, what is this? And Greg John said, it's an email. And again, 
your expectation of me is that I could be responsible for 66 students during recess? I didn't say that. Okay, I'm trying to understand this first. And Mr. Don, I really tried to understand your directions and I'm just trying to understand what from this paragraph, what did you want me to do differently? How would that I have not been Ms. different? Ruth, would that that paragraph be different? Ms. Ruth, you've asked him that question already. Okay. Okay. So please note these additional reports related to your actions or inactions for students with disabilities taken together, they may constitute a pattern of discriminatory action towards students with special needs, whether that pattern arises from intent or ignorance of the law. So Mr. John, you're saying that you told me this in 2014? Is that, well, we've already discussed this? Are we on the same note? Well, these are, I, I mean, would you agree that this is yes. a serious accusation that I am breaking the law? Would you agree that that's a serious accusation that would merit serious follow-up, merit, merit um, you know, Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, and I, okay. And, and do you necessarily, if, if a paraeducator or anyone says something, do you necessarily believe it? You've asked that before as well. And I indicate that I come to you with the report and I ask for your side of the story. And, and, your testimony is that you came to me with this report? I am saying I provided that to you, yes. And were there any witnesses to this, Mr. You've Dunn? asked me that already, and I've already indicated I don't recall that. And wasn't I, would you say I was pretty good about getting witnesses? Would you to say what? I, no, I have no idea about your ability to get witnesses. Did I generally bring a witness? No. You generally brought your field rep. Okay. That's not a witness. That's a representative from your union, right? Different. How often did I bring my field rep? Most of, most of the time. Was there a field rep when you gave this particular non-dated? Yeah, how would I know that? How did this resolve, Mr. John? How did it, how did you resolve this? How did we come to a resolution? I'd have to go back and look at the timeline of the year. There were concerns I had about special needs students in your classroom, but I don't know how this resolved, Ms. Reyes. That's the truth. I do not know. Mr. John, did you keep notes? Did you actually keep notes on a notepad? Generally, no. How, did you keep notes on a computer? I kept notes in a calendar in terms of knowing where I was supposed to be and when. Did you keep any kind of notes on me? No. You didn't keep any kind of uh, track or what have you or? If I had a concern with you, I committed it to writing and I provided it to you. Okay, okay. So Mr. Don, I'm actually looking, I've got it here. I finally got it printed. It did take some time. I don't see that this, a163, A164, A165 is an actual email. I don't see that it was emailed to me. I don't see that it came to me. I just see that my name's up top. I don't see my email address. I don't see your email address. Am I missing something? Can you point me to where on the document I should be noting that it's an actual email? No, I can't. Well, you did state earlier that it's an email and I told you I never received it. And I'm now again looking at this and there is no indication that it's an email. I hear you and I understand what you're saying. So, so do you have a, a question for him about that? So Mr. John, did you email this to me? 
what I said was it looks like an email to me and I based it on the nature of the font so that's what I said to you so so you're saying it looks like an email to you based on the nature of the font mm -hmm. don't do you see any other indicators that this was actually emailed to me Mr. Don no I don't and do you specifically recall emailing this to me no I don't so Mr. Don I'm going to assert that this was not an email because there is nothing to indicate that it was an email, right? There's no your name, my name. I'm also going to assert that you never gave this to me. Am I, am I incorrect? Are you incorrect about what? That, I, that I nev you never gave this to me. I've told you everything I know about the document that you're holding, Ms. Reyes. Okay, Mr. John, there's no date on it. So okay. when did you give it to me? What date? There's no date. You didn't put the date up top. You are a very prolific published writer. You didn't put the date up top. What date did you write this and give it to me? I don't know that. So, but then how are you certain that I actually got this? I can't be. Okay. Did anyone else witness this paraprofessional come and tell you that I had asked that person to leave the classroom? I don't remember. And again, you don't remember who the paraprofessional was? I have a guess, but no, I can't say with certainty, so I won't. Mr. Don, how did you track paraprofessional hours? How did you track that students were getting the paraprofessional support that, that, that was due to them? Through their schedules. And how did you, okay, and how did you track that the paraprofessionals were actually, paraeducators, my apologies, were actually showing up? So that would be uh, partly because they were managed by the special education teacher. Okay. Partly it would be in, as I went to the IEPs, we would actually check on progress. And partly because the paraeducators that we had at that school were, were excellent and they followed through. They stuck to their schedules. I would also have their schedules when I did my walkthroughs and I would find them where they were supposed to be and when they were supposed to be there. I, I'm just confused as to what, what happened. So if I asked a paraprofessional to leave the room and the person went to you, I'm trying to understand why you didn't walk the person back to the classroom and say, Ms. Reyes, you don't have a choice. You have to have the paraprofessional or paraeducator. Did that happen? I don't recall that. Okay, because the student would have had a certain amount of minutes in his or her plan, so... Did the, what did the paraeducator para do after reporting it to you? I don't recall that either. Okay. Um, and you said that the paraeducator came to you and said that it happened one other time. Twice. Okay. What happened to that other, those other minutes? Where did the paraeducator para go? Did they go? I don't know. What did the paraeducator do with that time? I do not know. Okay, and you, did you have any kind of system where a paraeducator would tell you where they were when? A, a kind of way that they would write, right? You know, on Tuesday from 2.30 to 2.50, I was in room, you know, cute bunny or whatever. Did you have a system where they, they tracked where they had given services? Yes. Okay, so did you track what had where that para 
educator had gone during that time that I had allegedly told this person to leave? I did not. I don't recall that at all. Okay. Um, okay, so, and it says, Dear Ms. Reyes, comma, I received a report yesterday from one of your third grade colleagues. Do you re recall who that was? I do not. Okay, and I'm going to assert that I quite liked the third grade teachers. Um, I, I felt, at least from my side, quite close um, to at least two of them that I, I thought a lot of them personally. And um, I don't, I know that they didn't do this. They wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't have gone to you and not to me. So I, I am having a hard time believing that a third grade colleague said this, but then you won't, you say you don't know who it was. Um, she told me that, oh, you said it was a she. So that does narrow it down because one of the third grade teachers was a man. So that narrows it down to two. Do you know which of the two it was? I don't. Okay. She told me that one, she discovered one of your special needs students in the garden area during recess. Two, that she directed that student to return to the playground. Three, that she brought the situation to your attention. Four, you told her that the student wasn't in your morning class. And five, was therefore not your concern. In effect, you told her that she wouldn't, she, but apparently it was a she student, she wouldn't be your problem until the afternoon. Mr. John, is, is that true? Did a third grade teacher say that? Yes. Can you tell me who? I do not remember which one. And it says, okay, Mr. John, again, I, I am going to assert that I, I never asked them about this because I never saw this till recently, but okay, let's, let me keep going. And it says, it says, I received a report yesterday. I am confused because there's no date, so I don't know what yesterday was. Can you tell me the day that I allegedly said to this third grade teacher, it's not my problem till the afternoon? I cannot. Can you, I know you can't um, uh, uh, name names about students, but did the, how did, did the, did the teacher describe to you how this student was a special ed student? No, I don't remember that. Uh, how, okay, so did you ask the teacher to, to, explain how he or she was able to discern that this was an actual special ed student? I've gone through what I remember about this document that you're looking at, and I think I've been pretty upfront and clear about it. And you're asking me for more questions of memory, and I just don't have more memory to offer you on this. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm going to continue. Uh, so, so let me just ask about that first paragraph. What is it that you wanted me to hear from that first paragraph? What is it that you wanted me to glean? What is it that you wanted me to change? If, if, if you could, you know, kind of synthesize it and boil it down, what you wanted me to hear and do differently, just going by the first paragraph, can you tell me? What I was always asking of you was similar in each case, and it was to keep your students safe, to plan your lessons well. And essentially, it's those two things. And so to keep your students safe, you had to know where they were, and also you had to provide a safe classroom for them. But that's always what I wanted. It's always what I wanted. And I wanted you to plan lessons so that your students would be engaged in instruction and those are the two key things and i wanted you to do it positively so those were the things i actually wanted of you and i was clear about that so mr john i'm talking about that first paragraph and it happened during recess 
right? And it was a student that was not in my morning class, was in my afternoon class. So again, what is it you wanted me to do differently at recess time? Seems what I wanted you to do is to know where your students were. And, it, and my inference would have been that student should have been in your classroom and not on the playground. But again, I at that, recess? Because we had two different recesses depending on the ages of the kids. And if the student wasn't in my in my actual classroom in the morning was actually in the other fourth grade classroom because we switched, would I be responsible for all 66 fourth graders at all times? I'm inferring from the note that I thought the student belonged with you at that time. But it and said you told her that the student wasn't in your morning class. She therefore was therefore not your concern. Mr. Donna, I'm gonna, well, I'm not gonna say, is that my verbiage concern? Are you saying that I used that, that actual verbiage or were you paraphrasing? You're asking one more questions in memory about this note. And I think, I think our conversation really is probably complete. I've given you everything I can recall on that particular note. And then Greg John went and described what was in it. And it was, quite incriminating stuff that never happened. And had this stuff happened in 2014, absolutely they should have disciplined me, absolutely. Um, it didn't happen in 2014. Um, and it, this one letter, one page was packed with, um, you did this and you, you didn't, you know, a, a third grade teacher, no name of course, said you didn't, you, you know, I don't wanna to get too specific because there's stuff in with children um and then and it just said last thursday right and there was no date up top and it then it went on to say you told a para twice this week i believe um to not come to your class that's absolutely not true i have no authority to do that and um in any case back to the letter greg john and the attorney general reported to the judge that this was an email. This isn't a, a deputy attorney general. And it, it, it appears as hard as it is to even say this, to even fix my mouth to say this, it appears that the attorney general and Greg John planted this evidence. Um, and they presented it as an email. And when I asked Greg John about it, and I said, can we go back to your, your documents? He said yes and I said you said this is an email and he said yes and I said where is it an email there's nothing that shows that it's an email oh it, I it, it, I said that because of the font well frankly the font didn't look like email font but even if it did um I said Greg there's no date on this um who was this third grade teacher who was this para of course he didn't know he didn't know so that was the fact that the attorney general, deputy attorney general of the state of California would present this paper that appears to be planted years later um, in as evidence and would have an administrator for a school district present it to a judge and state that it's an email when it's clearly not, when it was just a piece of paper with words on it um, was pretty shocking. And I, I remained pretty, shocked that that happened and also the principal said that uh reported that she had uh told you a number of things that were serious yet she didn't write them down uh does that sound like the process of san francisco unified school district would uh, in, uh see observe serious uh violations serious problems and not write them down uh, you think that that's uh, a a, a real thing? Right. One of the things that um, I want to address that was pretty, again, chilling, was that Fauzi abdul Kader clearly implied that a parent had implied that I had uh, singled a student out by race and engaged in racist activity. There is no doubt that that is what um, was being presented to the listener. Ms. Abdul-Kader, do you recall a time when I used 
the term H-U-H, ha, huh, with a question mark, in an email to you? I don't recall. Do you recall giving it to Mr. Brendan Brownfield, the investigator, as evidence that I was unprofessional? I don't recall that. Okay. Um, Ms. Abdul Kader, you stated that a parent said that that parent heard me reprimand an African American child and force him to sit at the back of the room or make him or or something like that? Yes, is that correct. Ms. Abdul Kader, did you ever put that in writing anywhere? No, I to I asked you to come talk to me in the morning so to discuss it. We had a we had a face to face meeting about it. And what did I say? You deny it. Okay. Did you ask the librarian about it? Yes, I did ask Miss Boyd. And what did she say? She said she did witness that. Hey, Miss Abdul Kader, Miss Boyd has passed away, so I I should not have asked that. Um, mm -hmm. If Miss Boyd uh, uh, witnessed that, did you put that in writing that Miss Boyd witnessed that? I didn't put this incident in writing to you. I just had a verbal conversation with you in my office. Did you check on the student to see if the student was okay? Yes, I did. And what did the student say? The student said he was okay. Um, what specifically did the parent hear me say? She didn't give specific words. Uh, nor, um, or I don't recall the specific words in which she used. However, she was um, she was very much concerned about the way that you were speaking to your only African American student in your class. Did you ask her for specific words? I can't recall that. Um. And when you say she was very much concerned, can you tell me what it was that you know, led you to believe she was very much concerned? She wrote to, I think she saw me or call, I can't recall whether she called me or she saw me in the morning and she said, I really need to speak to you about something I saw in the library. Okay. Was this parent a parent in my class, was it a parent that of one of my students? Yes. Okay. Um, did this parent ever see this happen again? She did not bring it up again. Had that particular parent complained about me before? No, I can't recall that. Did that particular parent complain about me after that? No. Miss um, Abdul Kader, would you consider this a serious event? No. Why, can I ask why it's not a serious event? Because it, it was a one-time incident where you, where the parent came and said that you made an African-American kid sit in the back of the room. I approached you about it. I informed you that, you know, it shouldn't take place again. And I didn't feel like it was something that was, um, that it wasn't something that you were doing all the time. Had I ever done that before? 
Not that I'm aware of. Had I ever done that after? Not that I'm aware of. Had I ever made any child sit at the back of the room? Ever. I can't recall that, no. Did you believe the parent? I think there was some truth to it since Ms. Boyd had confirmed it. Did Ms. Boyd hear me make the child sit at the back of the room? I asked Ms. Boyd if she saw an incident in which you made this child sit in the back of the room, and she said yes. Did the child not want to sit at the back of the room? That I'm not sure. Did Miss Boyd say that I was punishing the child? I don't recall that. When Miss Boyd, when we are in the, well, let me ask you this. Was Miss Boyd a credentialed teacher? Yes. So when we are in the library, Miss Boyd is is essentially the teacher, right? No, because when we what we spoke about as a staff meeting is that when the students are in their specials, the classroom teachers and the specials, the teachers, are co-teachers. So both the teacher and the teacher that's teaching the special are both the teachers. Was I, did Miss Boyd say that I was in the room? Yes. Was I helping her teach? No, but you were helping manage the kids. Okay. Did Ms. Boyd need me to help manage the kids? No, she didn't. Okay. So I'm confused as to why I would do this. Um, was, was the parent implying that I had done something overtly racist? Was, or not implying, did the parent tell you I had done something overtly racist? She didn't use the word racist. She said that she witnessed that you made an African-American student sit in the back of the room. And, and, I, and how did I make him? I'm not aware of that. Because, you know, I don't, that's not a tactic I've ever used is making kids sit at a uh, okay. Well, uh -oh. wait, that's, okay. that's your testimony. Do you have uh, any more so, specific questions? Uh, well, I, I do want to know, Miss. Uh, did the parent say that I, I used harsh words towards the child? I can't recall. Did Miss Boyd say I used harsh words towards the child? No. Was the child on the rug? I don't know. Was he, I mean, was he separated from the class? No. So he was with the group. Yeah, no, uh, none of the adults said he was separated from the, from the group. Okay. So he was still in the group because there's different places they could have been in the library. I don't know. Sometimes they sat in the pit. Sometimes they sat in the pit where the back would be up against a wall. Sometimes they sat at, at tables. Sometimes they sat at the rug. Sometimes they sat at computers. Do you know where in the library the child was? No, I don't know. I was not present for that. Did the parent say it specifically? No. Okay. So you didn't feel the need to memorialize this? No. Is there a reason you felt the need to tell it as a means to take away my credential today? All right. So, Ms. Yeah, Ms. Reyes, yeah. let me just say that the witness is not... Um, Neither not, this witness nor any of the other witnesses are. Uh, you, you've used that term, trying to take away your credential. This is an accusation okay. brought by the complainant, who's the the head. I don't remember what the term is of the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. So just so that that's clear. So Did you have another question? Can I can I, ask, can I ask why you thought it was relevant to bring up today?
the question was in regards to if a parent ever made a complaint about you, Ms. Reyes. So that is in connection to a complaint that a parent made. Okay. And did the parent put it in writing? No. Um, aside from the one thing that you talked about that we'll talk about tomorrow, has any parent ever put a complaint in writing? Mm, no, they've only verbalized it. Okay. Um, and you mentioned some emails before school started that that parents said they didn't want me as their teacher? Yes, I think that was the case. Either they emailed me or called me or came to, directly to my office. But Ms. abdul Kader, I heard you say emails, that people emailed you. Um, and should we have the court, the stenographer, court reporter, go back, or can we just look at that? I heard uh, what, what's your question for her? Okay. So, can you describe the emails in which you received saying that from parents that they don't want their children in my class? I can't because I don't um, have the specific emails in front of me. Do you still have those emails? I don't know. Did you delete them? I don't know. Did you forward them to your boss? No. What did you, how did you respond to those emails? What was your response? I can't recall. Laura, you submitted evidence to my union that you were communicating through, with Blind CC with those particular people about my evaluation process before you even started the evaluation process with me and and during it. it, 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 it is there a question? Is there a question? Is that correct? Were you blind CCing those people regarding my evaluations and the evaluation process? I can't recall. Do you have it in your exhibit? I have it in my hand. It was in discovery. I don't have it in this exhibit. So, so, okay. You don't, uh, okay. You don't recall. Do you, is Miss Deborah Slava Burton the par, lead par, uh, at the time she was the director of par, correct? I don't remember her exact title, but she did work for par. Yes. And Carrie Slaughter was in labor relations. Is that correct? Yes. And Patricia Fieldstead, I don't know her, but I looked her up. It looks like she was somebody that works in HR. That's what I saw on the computer. I don't know. I'm not sure either because I don't. I have. I, I was not in contact with her. Okay. And Richard Kirchy. So I have emails oh. for. So. Any any idea why you would have line CC'd them multiple times specifically in regards to my evaluation before they started and during it? Why would Human resources, the PAR, and um, uh, uh, labor relations be involved in my evaluations before they started and during the evaluation process. Um, objection assumes facts, not in evidence. Yeah, uh, sustained. The witness said that she did not recall this. Um, I asked her. Did you write this down? No. Did you send me any kind of counseling memo? No. Um, so there's so much I'd like to say about that. Um, and I don't want to get into too much because it's, but that is so cheap. That is so divisive to do something, to, to present something like that, that number one, isn't true. Number two, had I done that whenever it supposedly happened, it should have been dealt with. It should have been, um, I should have been disciplined. There should have been something. And it's just this vague story she presented to the judge as true. And um, I feel that the fact that, that she presented that 
as evidence against me with no evidence and put such an accusation out there, I feel that that should be looked into further. I, I do. I do feel that um, it was quite disturbing to me. This issue of, of bullying of teachers and the use of the PAR program to get rid of large numbers of teachers, uh, you have really confronted it uh, pretty straightforwardly and challenged them. And mm -hmm. teachers did watch this hearing. Um, it sounds like this is a systemic problem and it sounds like a large number of professional teachers who've given their lives to education are now being driven out by this program. What do you have to say to the people of California, the parents uh, and the people of California about this PAR program and how it's being used and manipulated apparently to get rid of uh, teachers such as yourself? I have a lot to say, of course, and I've said it for years as have several people I know. Um, of, of course, this is being used to, to as a pension reduction, right? And one of the things I found in the in the trial quite quite alarming was that Richard Kirchie, you know, offered up this information about how wonderful this PAR program was, and the the retired teacher slash volunteer offered up, oh, I just wish Miss Reyes had done PAR. This was when they were under when when these people were their witnesses right not on my cross examination well when i asked the retired teacher slash volunteer do you know anyone that's ever been through it no you know and and um and when i asked richard kirchy some questions about it he said i mean richard kirchy's been in the district a long time i think he said he was uh, in education 45 ish years um he definitely had a lot of positive things to say about the PAR program, some of which I know are patently untrue. Um, but then I said, has anyone ever said to you that it was a helpful program? He said, oh yes, one woman and one person. And he even admitted that he, he was about to vote on her employment when you know he was on the PAR panel. And you know I tried to get him to see that there was some power differential and, and I felt like he didn't see it, maybe he did. And I wanna say one of the things Richard Kirchie went out of his way, I didn't ask him about this to say several times. He said that the, the principal, it takes the principal out of it and the principal and the PAR coach never collaborate. I know that to be absolutely false. I am uh, very certain that they collaborate. When I was at Hillcrest, I saw Anna Luna and Richard Zapian collaborating quite a bit. They would walk around the school together. They bullied a teacher to the point that she collapsed in front of students. Together, Anna Luna and Richard Zapian uh, bullied somebody I know um, to the point that an ambulance came and got her. Uh, so, and I know definitively that Fauzia Abdul Kader and Vani Ari, the Vani Ari was assigned to be my park coach, were communicating regarding me. I've actually seen emails. So Mr. Kirchie's assertion that he brought in on his own, I didn't ask him more than once, that the principal and the PAR coach work separately is not true. That is absolutely not true. And um, I just found it really interesting that they would, the judge would let them talk about PAR, but when I tried to put any evidence that I had put in a timely fashion, it all got thrown out. And I don't want to speak ill of a judge who is still waiting. I'm waiting for her to rule on if I have a credential or not. But Joshua Johnson, you know, all the whistleblower letters that I had sent to the attorney general, he got them all thrown out. I did, I did object, but I'm not an attorney. I'm sitting there by myself. I couldn't, you know, frankly, I couldn't even get my computer to be so that I could see what was up. I had to have well, them describe well, you, it. You yeah. tried to get the uh, UESF leadership, uh, Susan Solomon, to get an attorney. What, what was your experience with that effort to have proper representation or legal representation? Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, mine was quite unique, but I do know that it's common that, that it's, the legal representation is a problem, but I, I'll, I'll speak for my story. They sent me to somebody by the name of Chris Shum. Um, he has been a CTA attorney for, I believe many years. Um, he did tell me definitively, you know, they're making this knock knock 
very large so that you can't afford to defend yourself, right? Unequivocally, they made it large so that, but he said I would have to pay him $100,000. I sent something to Shannon, Mr. Shannon O'Hara at the CTA immediately saying that, that I was told I'd have to pay $100,000. This was in addition to the union paying him. And this was just to defend myself from the knock knock. Um, and he, uh, shortly after that, Shannon, Mr. Shannon O'Hara sent me a letter that I was being dropped from any kind of representation because I had filed something against the union regarding PAR. So I got no representation, but I wouldn't have been able to afford 100K anyways. And um, since then, Chris Shum, the CTA's attorney, has been indicted. I don't believe he's been found guilty. So, but he's been indicted for some. Um, fraud with gun licenses in Santa Clara County. And, and uh, so it was quite an, and that has nothing to do with me, but you know, this is where you get sent when you have a problem. And, and um, it's hard, it's really hard. It's very, very hard um, if you're not independently wealthy and, and you know, it's, it's not a, representation, I, I, I hope for the teachers who have gotten representation, I don't know you, maybe you, it's great, I don't know any of them. I do know people that haven't and it's been quite soul crushing because they're being bullied, they're being harassed and the person that's supposed to help them doesn't. And that's hard. And the CTA is a, is a big organization. It has millions and millions of dollars. But what you're saying is you had problems getting representation to defend yourself with oh. your license being threatened and you know other teachers in the same situation that were not provided with legal representation. I'm not going to speak for other teachers. That's certainly my impression is that it's a lonely space to be in because you think that I, I, I've heard it's my belief that it's very lonely. It's very lonely and hard to get representation. I can say for myself that that was unequivocally the case, yes. And the district management, uh, the the Board of Education, they're aware of that. I, I know I talked to Mark Sanchez and uh, asked him about this PAR program and that it was being used to discipline teachers. That's not what it was supposed to be uh, doing. And he said the lawyers had approved it at the district. So Mark Sanchez, who's on the Board of Education, was aware that this program is really being used to discipline teachers. Do you, do you think that this is really uh, pretty common knowledge that this program is basically being used to retaliate against teachers? Yes, I do. I know that when they were doing the negotiations during COVID, when the teachers were out completely back in, you know, kind of the autumn time, that one of the biggest things or a huge concern for teachers was, will I get put in par, right? So seemingly, it sure seemed to me based on some of the emails that that was a huge concern is if I go back to the classroom, you know, during COVID where there where things have been changed, can I still get thrown into PAR? And so one of the things that was in the negotiations was that they won't have PAR next year or they won't, they won't be able to be um, evaluated. You know, I shouldn't say for sure, but PAR was a huge part of the early negotiations to even for teachers to even go back to the classroom. Uh, so yes, I think I, I, I think it's known. I don't. There was a, a person who wrote her doctorate thesis on it. Um, I believe her name is Lisa Smith, and she talked a little about that. That you wear the the scarlet P for PAR. She actually had a. a um, you know, her name's Dr. Smith, I believe. I, her name is for sure is escaping me. But in any case, she had a section that said P, that there's an actual scarlet P that you wear for par. You know, people believe that where there's smoke, there's some people believe that where there's smoke, there's fire. And in the case of San Francisco, one of the things that you uh, got information about was, and that, that most teachers were unaware of, is that this par program was actually uh, embedded in a uh, parcel tax? Yeah, yeah. How could that be that a negotiation procedure was embedded in a parcel tax, uh, excluding really the union right to 
prevent people from going into par if they were being retaliated against or they were improperly being put in par? Yeah, it's attached to the, the way I was put in where, you know, some mystery person went up supposedly and got Vince, Ma Dr. Matthew's signature, although it does look digital, like a digital signature, the way I was put in, that's under the 2008 Prop A. And, um, you know, Lita Blanc has to told me that they weren't meeting, the superintendent and the union president are supposed to meet once a year to discuss finances and if it's even working, if there's any evidence. I've never seen any evidence that anywhere that PAR helps teachers or children. In fact, Chris Shum said they, that they've actually looked for it and that there is none. And I do wanna correct myself that that person who wrote it, I believe her name is Allison Smith that has the, the doctorate thesis on PAR. And um, a million, over a million dollars is being spent on PAR uh, in the San Francisco Unified School District. And apparently they spent a large amount of money trying to remove you as a teacher. And uh, the issue of uh, uh, the teachers union not really making this an issue statewide, do you think that they're in bed with management and they've, ma they've allowed management to uh, do discrimination using this PAR program? They run the program together. So I, and that's, you know, often the first thing that's pointed out by the district, we run it together with the union, we're partners. So um, I, I can't imagine when it would ever be appropriate for a teacher to evaluate another teacher out of their job. And it's one of those things I've described to people that don't live in California and they are completely befuddled that a program like this could even exist, um, right? Where a teacher comes and evaluates another teacher out of their job and that there's this panel and that the teacher that's being talked about doesn't get to hear what's being said about them and you're, you get to come and present, but then you have to move out and the principal comes and presents about you and then you have to move out. So, um, and I asked Mr. Kirchy that during the hearing last week. I specifically asked him about that. I said, if this is a program to grow, why why are people shut, you know, shuttled in and out where they can't hear what the PAR coach is saying? And um, so, yeah. And I think it's also very telling who the particular law firms have been that actually defended PAR in cases other than my own. They've used um, Jackson Lewis Right, and so certainly union people are quick to call Jackson Lewis anti-union, but when it comes to PAR, who defends PAR? Jackson Lewis, um, Mr. Kirchy, when I filed something against him, he used a law firm called Bertrand Fox Elliott and Wenzel. And right, so yeah, these are law firms that I would hope a, a labor union would be opposed to. I've heard them speak out specifically against Jackson Lewis and other venues, but they let Jackson Lewis defend their program. That's, that's odd to me. And you also said that uh, although the PAR program, the people in it who go, our coaches and others go back to the classroom, but you were saying that you have experienced that a lot of these people that end up in the uh, managing the PAR program, being part of the management of the PAR program, uh, PAR program end up being managers uh, or school uh, district uh, officials or managers, um, and they keep their jobs in this kind of a stepping stone to school management. Is that the case? Oh, absolutely, unequivocally. It actually says in the contract that they ha can't use it as a stepping stone to management, and without a doubt, PAR coaches do. I can name them, Vani Ari. Uh, never went back to the classroom. I don't believe Anna Luna did. I don't believe Sarah Saldana, who's now the principal at Jane Parker, was a PAR coach. Eve Arbogast, Anna de Arce. You know, I, I'm I'm okay with naming names of people who go into administration. I, I you know, people who go back to the classroom. I'm not going to name names, but teach because teachers didn't sign up for that. But, you know, Ana de Arce never went back to the classroom. She was a PAR coach. She, and she's one of them who suspended me for 15 days, a record suspension. She was the, the 
Skelly hearing, and I use that phrase loosely, uh, officer and um, were there about par and a farmer, former par coach who advanced her own career that way is, and I was, you know, so it's without a doubt, it is used as a way to move up. It is not, the contract is not honored where it says to, to go back to the classroom. And lastly, there have been uh, opposition caucuses in the union to the, uh, the slate that's controlled the union. And I've heard from other teachers that, uh, that in fact, the teachers who were active in, in union politics opposing the leadership were themselves placed in par. Do you know that to be the case? And what do you think about the idea that in, possibly the teacher union leadership would actually use par to get rid of dissidents who they're challenging their leadership? I can think of some cases where I certainly perceive that to be the case. I don't want to speak for other people. So certainly I perceive that to be the case. And uh, especially a few years ago, I, you know, I haven't worked for the district in a few, a couple of years. So yes, I do perceive that to be the case. That is accurate. And what does that say about the trade union movement that something like that would happen? It's sad, frankly. I, yeah, it's, it's very sad. And um, there certainly are wonderful unions out there. Unions are a wonderful thing and they're a needed thing. And, but do I feel that from my worldview, has Susan Solomon stewarded her power? Well, no. My worldview is that Susan Solomon has not been a good steward of her power. That's my opinion. And the issue of the attack on public teachers, public education, the fact that senior teachers are being driven out, it takes years to become a professional teacher, that doesn't sound to bode well for the future of public education in California. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that point. <laughs> I, I, um, and again, I'm sorry for laughing. I, I can either laugh or cry. <laughs> um, sh sh sure. I, it's, it's, I feel it's a problem. I, I believe that PAR was an attack on, on pensions. I believe it was attack on senior women. Um, it's definitely targeting, you look at the African-American population and, and the amount of them, of the senior African-American women that get targeted with PAR, I don't have it exactly in front of me, but there is undisputably just disparate impact on one group. And, you know, right where that intersects, African-American and women and their pensions and their ability and, and women's ability to live um, and, and, and most of the people that leave and take a, a smaller pension than they had planned to, it isn't that they had to take less money every month that hurts them. It's that they were so viciously disparaged by a fellow teacher being the par coach, right? That would collect all this data on them and say, and then they get cornered into retiring early that, that really is hard on so many people that they've reported that, that they can handle that they left earlier than they wanted to. They can handle that they got less money from their pension that they wanted to, but to, to have years of, of a happy teaching life and then to have your own union and, and target you like that, it's, it hurts people. I can, I can tell you that, yeah, it does hurt them a lot. And you went through the PAR program, but you, no. Persevered and you decided. No, I never went through the PAR program. No, you, you never. Refused to go through the PAR program. I wouldn't sign the just, and that's one thing that I regret not bringing up with the judge last week. Um, there was so much, and I was by myself, and um, was that they they're forced to sign non disclosure agreements, and I'm not going to sign that. No way. So once you're in PAR, you can't you can't file a grievance. So a, a, a PAR participant, I call them PAR victims, can't file a grievance, you lose grievance rights. Um, you sign that you won't talk about anything in PAR. 
what, what, it, it, it is absurd what they are forced to do. Um, so no, I wouldn't, I, I refused. And that's why I was suspended for 15 days, two times. Mm -hmm. So th this uh, signing away of your rights, is this legal to, to sign a non-disclosure agreement and then not be able to grieve anything as far as what is happening to you? Well, Chris Shum told me that it's not legal, but you know, Chris Shum, I don't think he's gonna show up for me and say that. And so, but the, C the CTA lawyer actually said it's illegal, but the CTA statewide, have they done anything to challenge these illegal agreements? Not that I'm aware of, no. No, I, I know individuals have, without a doubt. There's been- some But not without the legal resources of the CTA. Oh, no, no. The, the CTA, no, no, does not help them, no. In fact, I, I, would, I would venture to say that most of the people would say that the CTA did the opposite. What do you hope to come out of this? Because you uh, did want other teachers to see this. Mm -hmm. Do you think teachers should organize statewide to shut down this PAR program and, and really have a union that's fighting for the teachers and not colluding with management uh, to get rid of senior teachers? I do. I really wanted this. When I found out this could be online, this, this OEH hearing would be online, that's when I decided to do it. I'm not hopeful. The, statistically, teachers who go to OEH don't win, in particular teachers over a certain age. So I'm not particularly hopeful about winning. I can tell you, I believe without a shadow of doubt, I discredited their witnesses. I believe that, um, right, that, that it, Frankly, it was obvious they were lying. Um, because I've offered you support. I gave you feedback in how to make improvements. I believe that I tried my best to support you to improve in your practices. And each time, um, you would deny those feedbacks, would be unaccepting of the feedbacks. And um, I heard that PAR would be, um, you know, they have great coaches. They have a great coaching model. They're designed to support teachers to make improvements. And so that's why I felt it would be of your best interest to work with a PAR coach to support yourself in, in improving as a teacher. And, and when did you come to that conclude? When did you when did you first have that idea that that should be that, that I should have a par coach? By the second um, observation cycle. Okay. So. Okay. Um, and y yesterday, I believe, and I I was taking a lot of notes. I believe you told Mr. Johnson that during the 2018-2017 school year, I got a needs improvement. I, I'm not 100% sure you said that. So if, if, I, if I wrote it down wrong and heard it wrong, I apologize. Was that said, was that the case? Yes, you had a needs improvement 2016 to 2017 and 2017 to 2018. Okay, so okay. I did look through my notes and and my evidence i couldn't find the 2017-2018 um needs improvement can you show it to me please or can you point it out because i really didn't um miss reyes i don't have any evidence that i brought with me is it in, in the, are you referring to an exhibition that either mr johnson has or that you have I couldn't find it in the exhibits. I'm not saying it's not there. I couldn't find it. And I couldn't find it in my own personal stuff. I, again, I just would, I just am asking where I could reference that. So I could just, and it, okay. I, I'm not, Ms. Reyes, I let, Ms. Reyes, let me just ask Mr. Johnson, um, since he's the one that's most familiar with complainants exhibits, if he can confirm with us whether that particular evaluation is among the evaluations that has been uh, uploaded to case lines. 
the 2017 to 2018, I didn't have the performance reviews, and so all we have is the oral testimony. Okay. In some cases, and just making things up and just pulling stuff out of thin air. Um, I mean, there was one time when Fauzia Abdul Kader described my red skin, and this is when she was their their witness, right? I and I I she described Joshua Johnson asked her a question asked her something about me and she said she walked into the room and my face was red well there's a lot to that I you know I don't think we should be making suppositions about people's emotional or mental state based on what you perceive their face looks like I also do have a diagnosed condition of rosacea I sometimes it's quite severe I've been on medication for it so there the best they can come up with is witnesses who say I had red skin. Um, it, it, it was quite uh, a red, she said my face was red, she didn't say my skin was red. Um, which it quite frankly could have been, I have rosacea. Um, this is the kind of stuff that a deputy attorney general is spending four days. I mean, a principal in the middle of COVID reopening shows up to tell the the them that I had right these these very nebulous things and she had didn't have dates and she didn't remember where she was standing and it was it was yeah I, I'm glad people got to see it because I, had I been in a room by myself in some courtroom where I would have had to drive, drive 60 miles a day I couldn't have done it. Just, just the, just the drive there and back would have been hard. And they have attorneys, and they're getting paid. And those of us that are going to these hearings, we're not getting paid, right? My, my dismissal hearing was supposed to take a month. I was supposed to miss a, a month of employment, drive to Oakland every single day, sit in a room by myself while they have attorneys and, um. How, who can do that, right? And and so when I found out it was going to be on, they didn't do it on Zoom. I believe they did it on a different platform. But I thought, you know, I'll show up. I'll because I wanted to defend my credential. I, I wanted I wanted to defend my job, but I I couldn't go to Oakland every day for a month without an attorney by myself up against up against Mike Quinn who, and Richard Kirchie and Fauzi abdul you know, who had, Mike Quinn in the, who's the district, the attorney for the school district, in the dismissal, he actually sent as evidence against me my medical records that he wasn't supposed to have. So this is the kind of stuff they were doing. Um, this is a school district. And, you know, I've told the board, I've told people about it. All these people are still employed. Greg John became chief of labor relations in the middle of a pandemic. This is the person that they sent to the table to, to negotiate and right. And that's another thing. The public can't see these negotiations, these labor negotiations, even the teachers can't see them. So it's a problem. It's a, it's a real problem. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking with Margaret Reyes. She uh, was a teacher at San Francisco Unified School District for many years and was targeted, refused to go through the PAR program. And as a result of that, she was uh, put through a, a dismissal uh, program and she spoke up, fought her way through it and represented herself at a hearing. And she's been talking about that hearing tonight. We, ha we don't know the results of it, but hopefully you will win your case, but in any event, your story is gonna get out, Margaret. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being willing to shine a light and thank you for showing up.